So now let's get some more data into our JSON object. So over here we set up jcontent in the last lesson. We only took first name and last name. And I'm going to flip back over to Wikipedia and use this JSON. Um, so this is a typical JSON uh, representation describing a person. So a, as well, if we had multiple people, we could have multiple um, of these objects in representing multiple people's information. So I'm going to simply copy that over. And again, it's an, it's a an straight object. Uh, so all I have to do is do the equal sign and we see that we can still get all of that same information. So now when I go over to my web page and refresh it, we're still at John Smith. And one more thing that I want to show you before we go on, uh, we can look at that particular output within uh, within console log. So console log is a way to output uh, data um, that's not visible to the user, but it's used by developers uh, in order to communicate information, variables, and uh, back and forth uh, th through, uh, through the console uh, to communicate data. So I use it quite often within the development process when I do want to see how a particular set of data is laid out, especially if I'm calling in this JSON content and I'm not pulling it in, if I don't have it right here in front of me, uh, sometimes it's good to be able to see what you're actually pulling through on an Ajax call uh, and do console log so you can actually get to a sense of what data you're actually pulling in and how it's structured. So in order to open up console, and another reason that I'm using Chrome is because it's got really good dev tools. Uh, so this is the dev tools, uh, the dev tools um, add-on for Chrome, and it gives you a lot of powerful capabilities. And one of them is uh, that you can see this console information. So when I refresh it, I'm pulling through all that object information, and we can see here that the console actually. Uh, breaks up this information in a nice readable format. Uh, so this is uh, a great way to see additional information. Uh, so I do have an array here under children. Uh, and going back out over to here, we see that it's actually uh, reordered uh, the data, which is also interesting uh, to see that it's actually brought the children up and it's actually ordered it into uh, chronological, so starting with A and moving all the way to S. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so make note of that. Even though up here at the top, it starts out with object information directly as we've represented it within our code, uh, we see that when, when it pulls it out, it just organizes it um, alphabetically. And uh, so that's uh, that's always good to know because, uh, so again, this is more for readability. Uh, so we've got our phone numbers, we've got multiple objects in an array there, uh, we've got address, so we've got objects within an object, and now we can look at pulling out this information. So the first one that we want to look at is the arrays and how to pull out that array information. Uh, so go and closing that up. So we've got phone numbers, we've got two items in the array, and so how, how do you think that if I want to access this uh, f under phone numbers and the second item or maybe if we want to loop through all the different items and write them out here. How do you think that uh, we could do that? We could access this phone number instead of object zero. So I go into the code. It's actually going to be uh, relatively easy and straightforward. So I'm not going to loop through anything quite yet. Um, so just until we get uh, we get more uh, explanation about how that code is being parsed out. So within an array, if you've worked with JavaScript before, you know that when you are representing an array, you uh, there's um, the keys and the values. And the keys, if you're not sending any keys by default, it's going to be numerical, uh, starts at zero. So if I wanted to see my phone numbers and let's say I want to see type. So I could just take that phone number's value and just like we were calling the first name and last name, I can do phone numbers and then looking at this, so I'm 
accessing that object that I set up, that jcontent object, I'm going into that object and looking at an object called phone numbers. So this is the name for this particular object and this is the value that's contained within the object. And we see that it's got an array uh, and I want to get, so what I, I forget what I said, but I guess uh, type. So we'll go like this. Uh, so we're going to see, do you think that this will work, uh, that it's able to just pull out the type? Is it going to parse through here, stop at the first one, or it's going to go over to the second one? Uh, so what do you think is actually going to happen? Uh, do you think it's going to throw an error? So when I refresh it, we see that we get undefined because it's actually trying to return back an array. So if we were to put this one into Maybe I should do a second console log with the, the contents of here. So this is actually going to represent that entire array and we can see that when we console log that out uh, that we still get that undefined because we're not specifying what part we want to return back. So we have to be more specific here and we've got two items arrays start at zero so if we want to get that second item we have to specify which one we want to grab within that array and now we see that we get office returned. Uh, and then the same thing if we want to do the first one we could just do zero and I'll update this as well. So if we want to return the second item in that array, the second type in that array, uh, we would just indicate the order that it, it, that it gets represented within that array. And uh, so this is, um, this is very easily set up when we're returning values. So if I was to loop through it, I could loop through all the, the, the length of the array and then output uh, all the different types. So I'll show you that in the upcoming lesson, how we can filter through all of these uh, pieces that are available within the array. But for now, um, if we're specifying which phone number we want to return, we know that this is an array value, uh, we can return it within that type of format. So here's home and there's office. Uh, as long as we specify where, where it's located within the array, we have the ability to return that array information. So in the next lesson, uh, so we've shown you how we can actually pull data out of this JSON uh, data. Uh, now, in the next lesson, I'm actually going to show you how we can update some of this data using JavaScript. And uh, so we're not actually going to be updating the JSON file. So if we had a JSON file, uh, we could do that as well. Uh, but we're not going to be updating it within the next lesson. We're just going to be updating the data that we've got access to and that we're using uh, to simulate manipulation within JavaScript and actually working with the data and making use of the data that's coming in. Uh, so we're going to show you that in the upcoming lesson, how to modify data.